Starting us off in our number 10 spot, we have The Planet of the Apes. Yeah, remember those movies that were made in the 70s and then were rebooted to death? Well, they may not have been too off the mark. It is pretty well known that we have evolved from primates, but what is not known is how these slightly less intelligent animals became us humans who are now trying to create the perfect AI. <laughs> oh man, stop doing that by the way, we are already at war with ourselves. Let's not add freaking robots to the mix, please. Thank you. According to the anthropologist Raymond Dart, we evolved not just from our ape ancestors, but mainly from our ape killing ancestors. That was how our ape ancestors established dominance and slowly became intelligent beings. Gray matter, like our brains, also needs 20 times more energy than what muscle does, and it is believed that the meats that are high in protein and fat are what helped develop our brains. Once we started cooking, we used less energy to eat the tough food, and we used the extra energy and nutrients into our brains. So we quite literally may have just come out on top from eating meat and cooking stuff. Coming into number 9, we have Mermaid Syndrome. Mermaid Syndrome, as it is colloquially known, is something called Arianomelia. It's a rare deformity that sees the person's legs fused together like a mermaid tail. The condition is extremely rare and usually goes hand in hand with kidney and bladder issues. Many babies are stillborn with the syndrome, and the oldest known sufferer, Tiffany Yorks, died aged 27. In 2009, a 10 year old girl, Shyla Pepin, died from the genetic mutation too. Coming into number 8, we have Tree syndrome. Tree syndrome, as it has been called, is a rare genetic condition caused by an inactivating pH mutation in either the EVA1 or EVA2 genes. The condition means that a person grows scaly macules and papules which look like tree roots. The most famous sufferer is Didi Koswara, who died aged 42 in 2016. Coming into number 7, we have Cyclopia. Cyclopia is the name given to the congenital disorder that creates cyclopses. No, they aren't stuff of Greek legends. Some Cyclopses have existed in real life. There haven't been many living cyclopses, as usually cyclopia in babies results in miscarriages or stillbirths. As I said though, most human cyclopses do die within a few days. However, one cyclops goat in India is still living. Studying this goat may help humans with the genetic mutation survive in the future. Coming into number 6, we have elephant syndrome. Most people have heard of the elephant man, but what people in the 1800s didn't know about Joseph Merrick was that he was actually suffering from Proteus syndrome. This is a genetic disorder and a gene mutation. The mutant gene causes horrifying disfigurations, leading body parts to grow rapidly and asymmetrically. Not all mutations cause visible disability. Some, like fish odor syndrome at number 5, generate unusual smells. Fish odor syndrome is officially known as trimethylaminuria. This is a genetic disorder where the body cannot break down trimethylamine and comes from a mutated FMO3 gene. Unfortunately, this means that the sufferer smells. One sufferer, 36 year old Kelly Fadoe White from the UK, talked to the Daily Mail about her struggle, saying that her scent is fishy and oniony. She said that she has to work nights because her work colleagues complain of her smell. Coming in at number 4, we have Harlequin Ichiosis. This genetic mutation is pretty heartbreaking. It results in thick diamond shaped skin clumps separated by cracks. It also affects the shape of the eyes, nose and mouth, as well as often limiting bodily movements. Sadly for sufferers, there is no cure, and the mutation affects around 1 in every 300,000 births. One sufferer, American Stephanie Turner, said that people think that she's been burned in a fire. Coming into number 3, we have Werewolf Syndrome. Officially known as hypertrichosis or Ambras syndrome, this genetic mutation means that sufferers grow abnormal amounts of body hair over their entire body. Very strange at number 2, we have Tail Syndrome. Tail Syndrome, or a vestigial tail as it is known, is a mutation that means that some humans are born with extra vertebrae in their back, making it look as if they have a tail. One man in India actually had an 18 cm tail removed in October 2016. This has been called the longest human tail ever. The 18 year old Indian guy didn't see medics until he was into his late teens because of the social stigma attached to the mutation. I for one actually think I could get on board with the tail. Finally coming into number 1, we have a mutation that causes two heads. Officially known as polycephaly, this is a birth defect usually involving a parasitic twin. This is the case for Abby and Brittany Hansel, famous 27 year old twins from Minnesota in America. The pair share one body but have separate hearts, stomachs, spines and lungs and you know two heads. 
Interestingly, they have one set of reproductive organs, so if they fell pregnant, they would both be the mother. In our number 10 spot today, we have the Masters of Fire. For a long time, it was believed that our prehistoric human ancestors were the ones who discovered fire, but as it turns out, that just isn't true. The evidence now suggests that Homo erectus, which were the first of our ancestors to walk upright and use tools, are actually the ones who can claim the title of Master of Fire. These guys were the first to learn how to produce a controlled flame and really paved the way for us to harness the power that fire can bring. Researchers have found fire pits in Africa that they have been able to date back two million years, which is absolutely wild. We certainly owe a lot to our evolutionary ancestors and all their discoveries, as well as to researchers who help us get a glimpse into what life was like all the way back then. Coming in at number nine, we have the planet of the kind apes. Yeah, so maybe that last theory about our ancient ape friends isn't as true as we thought it might be, at least maybe. In the 1960s, the killer ape theory gave way to the hippie ape theory, which it was the 60s, so of course it did, dude. I mean, peace and love, bro, huh? But hey, I don't mind it. Anthropologist Glenn Isaac dug up evidence of animal carcasses that she believed was proof of these foods being relocated to areas where they could be shared with the rest of the commune. As Isaac saw it as well, the sharing of food led to the sharing of information of where other food could be found and skills as well, which then led us to evolve to the extremely kind human beings we are today. Remember that old saying that sharing is caring? Well, it looks like in this theory it holds lots of merit, and maybe we should remind ourselves about this every now and then. Coming in at our number 8 spot, we have Planet of the Swimming Apes. That's right, not just any kind of swimming apes, but also skinny dipping swimming apes. Near the end of the 60s, we donned the age of Aquarius, well at least in music. But after the other ape theories, Elaine Morgan, who is a TV documentary writer, made the claim that humans are way different than other primates because our actual ancestors evolved in different environments, such as water. For the apes that could swim, in order to properly navigate the waters a bit faster with more ease, they eventually lost their hair and standing up gave them the ability to wade in water as well. Now, let me just say that this theory is widely dismissed in the scientific community, but just back in 2013, world famous David Attenborough actually endorsed it. And he is a pretty intelligent guy if I do say so myself, so I think after this video we all need to do a little bit more research on that one because if he says it, man I almost have to believe him. Coming in at our number 7 spot, we have molecules meeting on clay. According to organic chemist Alexander Graham Karen Smith, the early forms of the first life on Earth could have arisen out of molecules that met each other on and inside of clay. These surfaces may not have only concentrated these compounds together, but they may have also helped organize them into patterns that are much like our genes that are formed now. The main function of DNA is to hold information on how molecules should be arranged. Now, Karen Smith believes that the mineral crystals in clay could have arranged organic molecules into these organized patterns and after a while the organic molecules took over the job and organized themselves. Pretty cool, huh? Well, not as cool as killing or hippie apes, but I'll take it, I guess. Coming in at our number six spot, we have deep sea vents. This theory involves all of us humans a long, long time ago just starting to pop out of these deep sea vents and floating up to the surface. From there, we met our underwater brethren and began to take over the world. <laughs> Once again, guys, you all know me, so I am just kidding. This deep sea vent theory actually suggests that the first signs of life may have erupted out of these submarine hydrothermal vents that spewed key rich hydrogen molecules. The rocky nooks could have have concentrated the molecules together and provided mineral catalysts for some critical reactions. Even now, these vents help support some pretty vibrant ecosystems, so who is to say that all life hasn't originated from there as well? Now, I remember when I was young and I was always feeling at home in the water and I was thinking like I was, I'd pretend to smash the wave or I'd like the wave was part of my arm and I would be like Aquaman or even a, a merman. So this theory I'm kind of into. I mean, it makes sense for me. I mean, did I mention I also talked to fish? <laughs> no? Okay. So Sorry, then I'm just bragging then. <laughs> Coming at our halfway point at number 5, we have life in the ice, not life on ice. That just sounds like an interesting scientific ice skating show that you would see when you were little when Disney on Ice was sold out or something like that. But anyway, back on topic, ice may just have covered the oceans 3 billion years ago as the sun was about a third less luminous. So this insanely thick layer of ice, maybe even hundreds of feet thick, could have protected fragile organic compounds in the water below from the ultraviolet light and harm from the cosmic impacts. The icy cold also may just have helped those compounds to have lived longer allowing key reactions to take place. So we may have come from the ice, so maybe we're all just a bunch of ice people and that would give the song Cold as Ice a whole new meaning. 
Coming in at our number four spot, we have the great throwing arms. Archaeologists believe that all of us humans and apes began to evolve once we figured out how to throw a baseball. <laughs> Just kidding, again. Not a baseball, but when we developed the ability to hurl stones at high velocities. Probably, you know, for mostly activities like hunting to eat. Faring found some evidence at Dimenisi in a 1.8 million year old hominin site that Homo erectus came up with the incredible idea for public stonings to fend off predators and scare them away from their own kills. Now these people were small, says Faring. This place was filled with big cats, so how did hominins survive? How did they make it all the way from Africa? Well, rock throwing could be partially the answer. He also argues that stoning other predators or animals was a social event that helped socialize them. Because it took many individuals to effectively fend off these cats, and they also became more intelligent the more they put their minds together. So there you go. Teamwork and sharing are our big takeaways from today's list. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have lightning strikes! Man, imagine how cool it would be if a bolt of lightning just struck the ground and BAM! There was a human being. Kinda like Thor. Yeah, that would be pretty sick, but obviously, it's not the case for us, not really. Electric sparks can generate amino acids and sugars from an atmosphere loaded with water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. At least, that's what was shown in the Miller-Urey experiment that was reported back in 1953. It suggested that lightning may have helped in creating the building blocks of life here on Earth. Although since the 50s, research has shown that the early atmosphere on Earth was actually low in hydrogen. So while this one doesn't hold much more than that, it sounds wicked cool still. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the environmental battle of the fit. Richard Potts, director of the Smithsonian's Humans Origins Program, believes that humans evolved from our ape-like ancestors because of the change in our environments. Every time there was a change, we would then adapt to it and then continue on the path of evolution. Through the Savannah Hypothesis, many believe that our ancestors were then made to navigate the harsh and scary terrain by walking and moving themselves to new areas, especially because in most areas, food and water could be few and far between. So we adapted to our environment just as well as any other animal out there, but I got one major beef with this theory. Why the hell did we never learn how to camouflage? Is that too much to ask? And finally, coming in at number one, we have From Space. Now, did you think we were actually gonna get through one video without one alien reference? No, good, because you would have been sorely mistaken. Many people believe we are just one chemical reaction after the other ever since the Big Bang. And we are all just stardust, which is actually kind of true and also probably a safe bet. But some people out there on the topic of who and where did we come from believe that we are actually aliens already. Maybe we were created in a whole nother galaxy or star system far, far away, and our mothership just dropped us off here millions of years ago. Then we evolved into the humans of today, and now the aliens are dropping in to see how their little science experiment is doing. Ever think of that? That would be pretty trippy, but hey, there is no real evidence on this one here, folks. But it is a really fun theory, and anything to do with aliens, as I'm sure you all know by now, will always grab my attention. But hey, in between this one and the lightning one, I don't know which one I prefer more. Lightning is still pretty cool. Coming into number 10, we have the man with the melted face. Huang Chunkai has been described in global media as the man with the melted face because he suffers from a tumor known as neofibromatosis. Sadly for the Chinese national, his tumors were left untreated for 30 years, which meant that his deformity spiraled out of control. Luckily, the Chinese government stepped in and offered him surgical reductions. He has now had five, which has reduced his 15 kilogram tumor. Although sadly, it will always continue to grow back, so he He's always going to need surgeries. Tumors, of course, stem from cell mutations. In our number nine spot today, we have blue eyes. We have known for a while that blue eyes are a genetic mutation, as we once lived in a world where everyone had brown eyes. But what I didn't know is just how far back this mutation goes. The crazy thing is that every single person today with blue eyes, myself included, can be traced back to one single common ancestor from thousands and thousands of years ago. That is pretty wild when you really think think about it. While blue eyes are more rare than we think, it is thought that this trait only survived because of the fact that these blue eyes were seen as highly attractive, which ensured that those with the blue eyes had no trouble finding a partner to procreate with. I am extremely grateful that things didn't go the opposite way and it wasn't considered a horrendous mutation or that there wasn't some scary belief that those with blue eyes were cursed, because if that was the case, our world would have been a lot different. I mean, at least in terms of eye color. In our Number eight spot today, we have relationship transformation. Our early human ancestors lived mostly nomadic lives, but at some point there began to be a transition into a more settled life. With this settlement came agriculture and property, which also means inheritance. This completely changed the way we looked at relationships and procreation. In the more nomadic times, monogamy wasn't really a thing because why? 
it wouldn't necessarily matter, and it was the norm for both males and females to have multiple sexual partners. The idea of monogamy just didn't really exist, but with the shift of civilization came the shift in this way of thinking. Now that people have homes and things, knowing who your children are becomes a lot more important to people. It's not like this shift happened overnight, but it certainly made quite the change for those who were living during these times. This undoubtedly has affected the way we live our lives and the more modern view of family and relationships. Who knows what our world would look like if this specific change never occurred. In our number seven spot today, we have sharing the earth. Evolution isn't a linear process. This might seem obvious, but it's something that not everyone has taken in time to consider. This means that our early human ancestors, the early Homo sapiens, lived on Earth with our even earlier evolutionary ancestors, such as the Homo floresiensis, which is more colloquially referred to as the Hobbit. That is absolute insanity to think about. We mostly know about Neanderthals. Thinking about these other hominins existing at the same time is very interesting. It is thought that we continue to live among them as recently as 15,000 years ago. In our number six spot today, we have man's best friend. We all know dogs are man's best friend, but just how far back does this bond go? Well, as it turns out, way farther than you may have thought. Evidence shows that around 15,000 years ago, humans began domesticating wolves, which would eventually lead us to dogs. It is thought that the Eurasian gray wolf was the first of all the wolves to be domesticated, although little is known about why this practice originated. There is speculation that it may have happened unintentionally as the early humans may have shared excess meat with the wolves, which then led to a mutually beneficial relationship or a companionship. Others thought that they were simply domesticated in order to help the early humans hunt. At the end of the day, we may never know for sure, but we do know that the earliest known dog burial dates back to 14,200 years ago. So by that time, Dogs were certainly well loved by humans. In our number five spot today, we have travel. Thousands and thousands of years ago, the early humans set out to explore areas of the world that they had not been yet, but this was an extreme challenge for them as it involved crossing the sea. The settlement of Australia is the earliest evidence we have of major sea crossing, and it is considered to be one of the greatest achievements the early humans made. It is, however, unclear if the goal was to reach Australia or if these people just got caught up in wind and waves and luckily arrived on land. It is assumed that the boats used were made out of bamboo, but researchers will likely never know for sure. There is some evidence that suggests that the early humans may have reached Australia as early as 120 thousand years ago, but we know for sure that it was at least 65,000 years ago, which is still quite a feat. It is highly, highly unlikely that the early humans made it on this voyage on their first try, so we can only imagine how many people lost their lives in an attempt to explore our Earth. Who knows what would have happened if they never took these risks? In our number four spot today, we have the burial practices. Every culture has their own practices for the burial of people who have passed away, and it is usually part of some sort of ceremony or ritual, but this wasn't always necessarily the case. The early humans had quite a wide variety of burial practices, with some burials and graves being extremely lavish and well decorated, with others just being plain. Researchers have found that men were buried more often than women, and infants were only buried very sporadically and sometimes not even at all. Sometimes bodies would be buried with household items or ornaments that they would have worn while still alive, but researchers just can't seem to figure out exactly why there is such a variety in burials. They have said that there seems to be very little rhyme or reason to it, so it may possibly just be one of those things that is destined to be a mystery to us modern humans. In our number three spot today, we have the Neanderthals. For a long time, it was believed that our early human ancestors killed off Neanderthals, which is what led to Homo sapiens taking over, but that is most likely not true at all. Instead, we did interbreed with them, which may have swamped their genetics, but there are some other evolutionary things that may have naturally contributed to the disappearance of Neanderthals. Scientists have been able to come up with a 3D model for what the brain of a Neanderthal would have looked like and have been able to compare that to the brain of an early human. While Neanderthals had bigger skulls, which meant bigger brains, humans have a much larger cerebellum. This is important since the cerebellum is responsible for so much, including movement and balance, to vision and learning, to language, and even mood. This means that we basically just may have had more flexible minds than Neanderthals, which allowed us to progress more quickly. We may have developed better hunting and foraging tactics quicker, as well as being able to develop technology at a higher rate. While we may never know for sure what caused the disappearance 
descendants of Neanderthals, it is still a question that is highly researched and looked into, so there is a possibility that one day we'll know for sure. In our number two spot today, we have tuberculosis. Tuberculosis has been around for years and has wreaked quite a havoc on our world, but its history goes back farther than we may have thought. The disease was well documented in ancient Egypt as mummies have been found with signs of the bacteria dating back 6,000 years, but scientists have begun being able to trace it back even farther than that to the Neolithic transition. This is the time when humans began taking part in agriculture and began domesticating more animals, and for a while it was believed that tuberculosis may have originated in these animals, and then it was passed on to humans. Well, as it turns out, this may not even be the beginning of the disease, as it is now believed that it emerged in humans 70,000 years ago. It is quite a mystery how it has managed to survive this long, as it needs a human host, but it also usually kills the human who is infected with it. But researchers believe that around 20,000 to 30,000 years ago, the bacteria evolved to be able to go dormant in the human host, only to reemerge decades later. This information is not only crazy, but it may help researchers with the fight against the bacteria in our modern society. In our number one spot today, we have the fight for food. In the other parts of these videos, we have talked a lot about the hunting patterns of the early humans, as they obviously did things very differently than we do today. But after scientists were able to piece together what a habitat would have looked like for a human 1.8 million years ago, they have been able to really show what life was like back then. One thing we don't often think about is how much competition there would have been for the early humans to get their food. Without high powered machinery, humans are certainly not down a few pegs in terms of their ability to hunt, and there are other animals on this planet that are much better and naturally equipped. This is what led to there being multiple ways of hunting because it was a highly stressful activity for them. Sometimes it was better to just scavenge what was left over from a large carnivorous predator, as it could be a huge risk going out and hunting your own meat in fear of becoming the meal. The recreation of the habitat also led researchers to learn more about the lives of the earliest humans and how they ate and drank. It is also believed that when they did go out to hunt their own meat, they most likely brought it back to safer places in order to feast on their kill. Mm -hmm. 